Have you ever wanted to make beautiful quilts like these, but maybe you've been intimidated by learning the process of foundation paper piecing? Or maybe you've tried this technique in the past, but have been frustrated because you couldn't quite figure out how to get your fabric placed correctly? If so, stay tuned because this video is for you. Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea Olson with Quilted From The Roots. And today I'm gonna to teach you my foolproof foundation paper piecing method so that you can make a cute raindrop block like this. If you wanna learn all my tips and tricks, then keep watching. So before we begin stitching this cute little raindrop block, let's talk about some of the things I feel that you need to be successful in foundation paper piecing. First of all, you're gonna need your foundation paper pieces your pattern. This is included in the link below, so make sure to print this out before you get started. I just printed this on regular computer paper, which is fine. If you find that you love the technique of foundation paper piecing, they actually sell paper that is made for this. It's a little thinner weight, kind of like a newsprint. Carol Dokes makes some, you can find it in your local quilt shop, I'm sure. That kind you have to remove, so you just tear away. They also make kind that you can leave in that will wash away. So this is by George Siciliano. You have to order directly from his website, but this stuff, I haven't played around with it yet, but I've heard great things. If you're just starting out and you're just trying to see if you even like this technique, just use regular computer paper. I promise it'll work just fine. So print this out. And then when you are doing a foundation paper piece pattern, make sure you check your pattern writer's description because sometimes they require you to trim a quarter inch away from the outside of these pieces. And sometimes they include the quarter inch already in there. So that way you'll know how to trim these up. Since I'm the pattern designer, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna trim directly on the lines that the quarter inch is already included in this. So when you go to start, you just roughly trim along the edges so that they're more manageable pieces. And when we get done piecing everything, we'll, we'll trim these up directly on the line as you can see here. Okay, let's briefly talk about fabric choice. This is actually part of our April block of the month for the advanced block. So I'm gonna be using that fabric today that I included in these kits. These will be fabric one, which is the actual raindrop. The background pieces are these navy rectangles. So when you're choosing your own fabric, this first piece, it's not a big deal because we're gonna actually glue this in place. But for the background, and just in general learning how to use foundation paper piecing, I really recommend either sticking with a solid fabric or you could even use batik. Why I say that is because you're already learning a technique about how to get fabric placed correctly and how to stitch on the line. And it's a lot to already learn. So if you reduce one thing that you have to pay attention to, it just simplifies the process. So I really recommend for beginners using a solid or a batik. So so now, oh, you're gonna need a glue stick. Any glue stick will work. And then the add a quarter ruler. These come either in a 12 inch and they also come in a six inch. It comes actually like this. But I recommend taking a postcard this is one I got from um, Becky Goldsmith when I placed an order. She had this in here. So any postcard, any kind of card stock or like a old manila folder you can cut up. It will be just fine too. Something a little thicker in substance to it. And what I did was made a hinge with that um, attached to the ruler. So I just took my ruler. There's a lip on these rulers. I think you can kind of see that. And I just take that edge and butted it up against the edge of this cardstock. And then I took some painter's tape or you can take masking tape and wrap it all the way around just like that. And it makes a hinge. And it makes this process just one little step easier. It's fine if you don't do this step, but I, I just find it easier to do. So that's my quick tip on the add a quarter. I don't do paper piecing without the add a quarter. So to me, it's essential. 
I would definitely look for one at your local quilt shop. And if not, I'm sure Amazon or somewhere online has them. So make sure to get one of those. You're gonna need a rotary cutter and you can use an iron if you want. If you do, I recommend getting one that is just plain on the bottom like this, no holes and no steam. This is just a really heavy duty iron and if you're using steam, then it can warp the paper. So I never use steam when I'm pressing my paper piecing seams. And I like this kind without the holes because sometimes you have little teeny tiny pieces and they'll get stuck inside the holes and <laughs> iron like a weird crease of them and got this on Amazon I think I don't know pretty cheap like 30 or 40 dollars and I use it for regular piecing as well and um, when I'm just using like spray starch and I don't need steam I can just still use this and it's a super heavy iron the weight of it on there it just really gets the seam creased really well so this one is a continental I've had a black and decker any of those times the sole plate just flat I, I love them um I think that's everything we're gonna need to piece this block. So let's go ahead and take one of our foundations and our first piece and our glue stick and get started. Let me show you this real quick too. We are gonna stitch on the paper side where all of our lines and our numbers are. So this is the side you're always gonna be stitching on. Your fabric is always gonna be facing right sides up when you flip it over. So the wrong sides of the paper and the wrong side of the fabric will be touching each other. So this is why I said it's easier to just use a solid or batik because then you don't even have to think about, is my fabric facing the right direction? Because <laughs> with those fabrics, there is no right or wrong side. This first piece, I went ahead and used a print just because we're gonna glue it in place and we know it's gonna be right. So what you'll do is take your paper, that you've roughly cut, and I can see the lines faintly. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but you'll be able to see them when you print it out. I can see the edges, so I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue right there in the center of my number one shape. And then I'm gonna put my right side of my fabric up and roughly place it there. I'm not gonna press down yet. So what I'm gonna do, and this may be awkward filming, but I'm gonna try and hold it up to the light. So I have the paper side facing me and I'm holding it up to the light and I'm checking to make sure that all four of my fabric edges are extending beyond the line of my number one shape. So not only extending beyond the line, but extending past it one quarter of an inch. So I can see that it is extending past all edges of my number one raindrop shape. So then I can just go ahead and press that fabric in place so that it stays right where I want it to be. Okay, so that's all there is to it. And I like using the glue. You can use a pen, but a pen gets in the way and sometimes it kind of wrinkles the fabric. So I just, I just like using the glue. And when you go to rip this paper away, it's only in one little spot and it comes right off. So now we need to add our number two piece because you're gonna sew in order. So we added one, now we'll go to number two and so on until we complete all of the pieces. So with this card stock or postcard or manila, whatever you're using, you're gonna just take it and line it up right on the edge of your line between number one and number two. And it's right on the line. So we're gonna take this paper and fold it over and make a good crease. And then before we fold it back, this is why I like the hinge. So it's just attached and I can easily do this one handed. And I just fold it over and butt that lip up against that card stock. And then we're gonna take our rotary cutter and cut. And this gives us a nice one quarter inch seam away from the piece that we're getting ready to stitch so we know where to line our next piece. So here's our next piece of fabric. It's pretty small, but don't let it intimidate you because I'm gonna show you a really cool trick about getting fabric placement right. This is where most people struggle with foundation paper piecing. Just remember this tip and you're gonna be fine anytime you ever wanna do foundation paper piecing again. So real quick, don't do this step, but I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing on camera. You will be able to see this print it out, so don't worry about it. You don't have to trace this, but I want you to see what I'm doing. I was able to see that through just fine, so I know you will, and that's how I was able to trace it. This is what you're gonna do about fabric placement. First of all, we know this is a quarter inch seam. We want our fabric 
to line up there. So we know one edge. And I am just looking at this shape and centering this piece of fabric with that shape that is there, our number two shape. And I am just lining up the edges there at the top because we know we need a quarter inch seam there. All right, so now we know that that is correctly placed. So how do we know if this piece is big enough if you don't have <laughs> cutting instructions telling you how big to cut it or that it's gonna extend beyond these edges? What I do is I draw this line in my head, extend this line beyond to this edge and make sure that this fabric is sticking out a quarter inch past that seam. Don't draw this on yours, but I'm just doing this so you can see what I mean. Okay, so basically do this in your head. <laughs> but you're wanting your fabric to extend a quarter inch beyond all sides of this shape, okay? That's what you're trying to do. Oop. So <laughs> grab your piece and center it with that shape. And you're lining up these edges here. And I can see by feeling with my finger underneath, basically I just trace like this. I can feel that this is extending a quarter inch past this seam just by running my fingers, basically tracing this line underneath and going like this. I can feel, okay, there's definitely a quarter inch past that line and I'm okay on this side. I check this point and feel the point and then go down with my finger and say, yes, it's definitely a quarter inch past that. Then I trace this line and do the exact same thing. So basically I'm tracing it and going like that. And yes, there's plenty extending beyond this line that it'll go a quarter of an inch to be caught in the next seam. If you aren't for sure about your point or something feels a little weird, you can always stick a pin right in that point and then check on the other side and you can see that there's definitely a quarter inch extending beyond that point. So you're definitely good and lined up. And that's how you do placement. You can also hold it up to the light and sometimes you can see, but if you have really dark fabric, it might be hard to see. I can see just this little bit before it gets to the paper. So these edges, you, know, you can check kind of that way. But to me, it's easier to just feel and know that I have plenty that will extend beyond all edges when we flip this back. Okay, that's the trickiest part. Once you get that down, you can do any foundation paper piecing from now on. So let's go to the machine and I'll show you how to stitch this. Okay, after we have our fabric placed correctly, we're gonna fold this paper back. And before we start stitching, I just need to mention that you need to lower your stitch link to about anywhere from 16 to 20 stitches per inch. My Bernina right now is set to 1.6 stitch length, but every machine is gonna be a little different. And the reason this is so important is because you want your paper to easily tear away when you go to remove it. So the smaller the stitch length, the easier it's gonna tear away. It just makes perforations and it tears more easily. Okay. So when you start, we have the crease line from where we folded this over. So I just make sure I use my hand wheel to crank the needle down onto that crease that we previously made. And you're gonna wanna start a good quarter inch, you know, a healthy quarter of an inch away from the line that you wanna sew on. So we lined up fabric piece one and two. That's the line that we're gonna wanna sew on right here. And so we need to start a quarter inch away and also end a good quarter inch away as well. You don't need a back stitch if you do this because then this seam that we're getting ready to sew will be caught in this seam allowance whenever we sew that. So that's why I choose to do it this way instead of doing the back tacking. Sometimes I've had it actually rip out and not be caught all the way, so I prefer this method. Okay, so once we are all set, we're just gonna stitch slowly along that line a quarter inch before, good quarter inch after, and that's it. And a quick tip on cutting. If you pull this top thread, it will pull this bobbin thread to the top. So I don't know, you can see this loop right there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Did you see how that pulled up right there to the top? So then when I cut, if I cut that loop and the top, it cut both pieces 
in one cut instead of having to cut twice. So you can do the same thing with your beginning. And I pull that bobbin thread to the top and cut. And then got both threads in one cut. So that way you only have to cut two times instead of four times. <laughs> You can see we went a quarter inch beyond both sides. You can always, if you didn't check, you can check with a ruler and count the stitches between one and two inches. I counted it equals 17 stitches per inch, which will work just fine for what we need. And then we can just finger press this back and I'll meet you over at the ironing and cutting board. Okay, now that that has been sewn and finger pressed, we're just gonna give it a quick press with the iron. And now it is time to prep piece three. So we'll grab our other small rectangle and flip this over. And what we're gonna do is do the exact same thing. We're gonna take our cardstock, put it along that line, fold our paper over and press. Take our hinge out a quarter and cut our quarter inch and now we know where to line the top part of our next piece up with so remember mentally in your head do this draw this line beyond here right and so mentally do this don't draw that on there <laughs> you're going to take this and line that up there with the top edge and center it with that next shape that we're trying to add on that number three shape so I've got the top edges lined up and it looks pretty centered along this shape. So now I just trace with my fingers, double checking this point that it's definitely extending a quarter inch past that point. So I can feel that. I know I'm good. Now I trace this edge. That feels good. I trace this line and basically if you trace, I'm going to do it on top, but this is what I'm doing underneath. If I feel like this, to the outside edge of it. And then that way my finger is about a quarter, like, well, bigger than a quarter inch, but I know I can feel it like that. If I trace that, I'll have plenty extending beyond where I need it to be. So basically this is what I'm doing underneath, along the outside edge and feeling that everything is extending beyond. And when it does, I know that I'm good to go and it will cover the whole entire shape when we flip it back. Okay, I think that's the last time I'll explain that. I think you get it. But I'm gonna take this back over to the sewing machine and stitch. Okay, I'm back over at the sewing machine. We have piece three lined up correctly. And we are gonna just stitch along that line, remembering to start and stop a quarter inch before and after the line. So I just hand crank that down where I need it to start, right on that crease line. And I was finagling a lot, so I'm just double checking that I have everything still lined up. And hold my tails and stitch. Go a quarter inch past and trim. And then we will go press this and we'll be ready to add piece four. Okay, we just got done stitching piece three on, so we will give it a good press. And now it's time to add piece four. So let's find it. It's down here. Take our ruler. I guess it is a ruler. <laughs> Take our cardstock, line it up on the line. Oh, and here's another thing. So I'm pulling this back. And since we stitched past a quarter of an inch, it's also peeling this fabric up as well. So just crease where you can on the paper and hold that really tightly with one hand. Pinch where this seam is and just push it down. Make sure you pinch where you've already sewn at the seam because if you pull just right here or right here, it might actually separate these two pieces and you don't want that seam to come unsewn. So just pinch right on that seam and press it down. And then it rips those stitches out of this paper to make it lay flat. So it didn't rip the seam, it just pulled it away from the paper. And now we have a clean pressed edge. So we will cut our quarter inch and add our piece four. And we're just doing the same thing. We're just lining up this top edge, these top edges here, looking at our shape of starts here and here, just trying to center. And then once it visually looks centered, we double check with our fingers underneath that it is extending a quarter inch beyond this seam or these lines here of the shape and especially this point and it all feels good so it's time to stitch all right it's time to stitch 
piece four. With this one, I'm just gonna start off the edge and sew along. And quarter inch basically goes off the edge. So this time we'll just cut over here and right here. And then when we go to trim it, that'll get those tails even trimmed a little better. All right, let's finger press and it'll be time to add piece number five. Okay, we just got done adding piece four. So we'll press and then we'll prep for piece five, which is down here. So this is same thing. We pinch the seam, push it down. I find this technique, once you learn it, very relaxing. I love this technique because after you learn it, it's one of those things I don't have to think about it anymore. And I can just sew and listen to a book or watch a show and just kind of zone out. And it's just, it's really relaxing to me. I love foundation paper piecing. All right, so I am finding my pieces, my edges, centering it, lining up at the top, double checking underneath. Everything feels good, so we're ready to stitch. Piece five. Okay, and we will finger press. And then prepare for piece six. All right, let's press piece five and then prepare for piece six. There's two seams on this one, so just carefully peel them both back. I'm centering that, just feeling underneath. Everything feels good, so it's time to stitch. All right, let's stitch piece six. Okay, it is time for piece seven, the last piece. So exciting. Time to stitch the last piece. All right, let's give the whole block a good press since that was our last piece. And this is what it looks like before we trim. Looks kind of funky, but what we're gonna do is take a regular ruler and we're just gonna line up our ruler along the edge, just right along this outside line and trim that away. We'll do the same thing for all four edges. Okay, here's what it looks like from the back. We just trimmed along all four edges. And on the front, we have this cute little raindrop. Here are a couple more techniques that will help you speed up your process. So since piece two and piece three are not touching each other, I'm gonna go ahead and prep both at the same time. So I already folded this and trimmed side two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do piece three as well. And then that way both sides are prepped and I can actually stitch both at the same time. If you decide to use something besides a solid or batik and right sides matter, when you place these, you're gonna wanna make sure you're adding right sides together like you always do. So this would be right sides together and then line them up, feel the same way as always, and then go ahead and stitch. Like I said though, you can see with trying to learn folding, stitching on the lines, folding it back, cutting with a quarter inch, it's enough to think about as a beginner. So when starting out, for sure use a solid or a petite. If you're more advanced, then this is where you need to remember right sides together and line everything up and stitch. Same thing here when we switch to piece number three, You'll take right sides together and then line them up and stitch. So you can see my two and three were sewn at the same time. So you'll just press these back and then do the same thing with four and five because they actually also don't touch each other. So see how four and five are there? You can go ahead and cut this back and prep both pieces to do at the same time. Now I'll go to the sewing machine and sew both of these. I went ahead and sewed four and five at the same time and pressed. And now it's time to do six and seven, but see how they meet up here? 
that means you cannot do both at the same time. So you need to go ahead and do piece six, stitch, iron, open, and then add piece seven. So where do you go from here? Well, after you've made the one block, I recommend going ahead and making all four blocks because practicing this method will help to instill everything that you learned today so that you don't forget how to do this paper piecing method. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, I will link some foundation paper for you to check out. I will also add links to the add a quarter rulers as well as an iron without any holes on the bottom. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to please give it a big thumbs up. If you would like to see how to incorporate these raindrop blocks into an actual block for a quilt, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow along with Tehachapi Mountain Quilters Block of the Month series. This will actually be April's advanced block of the month. And as you can see, these cute raindrops are the cornerstones. So if you'd like to see how to make this block, make sure to hit that bell notification so it'll alert you when I release the pattern in the next week or two. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!